I never liked the saying, always be kind, because you never know what someone is going through, because it implies that you should only treat others with kindness just in case they are deeply struggling. In a way, however, you do know what everyone is going through, because every single person on this earth is deeply suffering in their own way. There is none of the implied doubt. <laughs> Only when I finally really felt that sentiment was I able to start treating myself and everyone in my life with a different level of kindness that I hope to inspire today. When I originally sat down to write this talk, my instinct was to give you my steps as to how I improve my own mental health. But as time progressed, I continued to revisit the truth that the only person who can really change your life is you. I wasted many years of the past pouring my energy into the mental health of others until I realized that I was pouring it in the wrong direction, outward. And in order to be able to spread the kindness to others who were suffering, I had to first learn how to give grace and compassion towards my own struggles. So my goal here isn't to give you a set of affirmations or habits or exercises to improve your mental health, because those are a click away on Google. Instead, I'm going to attempt to be as raw and as vulnerable as possible to show you that there's a real life outside of the pain that you feel every day, but it can only be healed by you. The toxic thought patterns and negative self-talk that I used to indulge in the most frequently was hating my body. I thought that the stronger my hate grew, the more that my body would shrink. I was so afraid that if I loved my body, it would somehow enable me to become overweight, which is something that society had taught me to fear. I didn't realize that at the end of my binges, telling myself that tomorrow would be different was just another program of self-hate that I had to change. At the time, I was unaware that dieting was a normalized form of harming myself. In the last six years, I have been to inpatient programs, outpatient programs, and all different kinds of therapies, including EFT, EMDR, nutritionists, eating disorder counseling, trauma specialists, CBT, group therapy, you name it. I have probably tried it. <laughs> and I had always preached that I would do anything not to be feeling the way that I had been feeling. Because truthfully, I didn't want to die, but I also knew that I couldn't keep living the way that I had been. I was so desperate not to feel this way, yet I refused to try and change how I felt about myself. Throughout all of the years of therapy, I wouldn't try affirmations or self-love exercises because I told myself they were stupid and that they wouldn't work. A girl who had even flown to Colorado to do a sweat lodge in search of answers wouldn't even look in the mirror down the hall and try saying, I love you. I did four months of cupping, two hours twice a week. I saw acupuncturists and four chiropractors in five years, literally bending over backwards to try and cure my depression. Yet I refused to say that I loved myself. I didn't know a life outside of the shame and hate that I was using to fuel my actions. And it wasn't until I came home from a mentally debilitating day of work where I was laying on the shower floor that I decided it was time for a change. I usually coped with my depression through long, hot showers for many years before I realized that if what I was doing was working, then I wouldn't still be feeling this way. So I started to say that I love myself out loud, which is something that I had never tried before. I repeated it over and over until I was sobbing, and at the time I had no idea why. I was deeply programmed to hate myself, to hate my body, and to scrutinize my every word and gesture as some sort of survival mechanism to conform to who I thought I needed to be for the people around me. And I say survival mechanism because in some sort of subconscious way, other people's thoughts about me felt like a threat to my survival. My old coping skill would have been to berate myself after a bad day of work in hopes that the shame would be so great that I would remember never to make that mistake again. But that wasn't working, because 21 years of being angry and embarrassed and shameful had gotten me to this place, crippled on the shower floor after a hard day of work. So I started to really ask myself, what might loving and forgiving myself do for me instead? 
For so long, I was afraid that if I forgave myself, it would somehow enable me to keep making mistakes until I realized what a huge lie of the mind that was. Speaking from experience, I promise you it is much easier and more beneficial to walk through life without hating who you are. I have had three serious eating disorders over the course of several years. Bulimia nervosa, anorexia nervosa, and binge eating disorder with occasional purging. And I'm exposing this part of my life that used to bring me deep, deep shame in an effort to convey that I walked through every single day with only hate for myself. And I know what it feels like to not have the strength to even brush your teeth. But the good news is you don't really hate yourself. You may hate this version of yourself, you may hate the programming that you have been operating out of, but you don't hate who you really are at your core. And loving yourself won't make you conceited, it won't make you selfish or a bad person, and it won't enable bad behaviors. But it will help you to realize that every single person on this earth is in their head 24 hours a day the exact same way you are, feeling just as lost as you are, and we all deserve to take up space on this earth. You deserve to love yourself and forgive the suffering. I promise you it's better than feeling yourself with hate and shame. You don't have to motivate yourself that way anymore. It isn't working. Now, epiphanies are great, but it's hard work and change that you choose to make every single day that's going to make the tangible difference in your life. My intention is to show you that it's possible to live outside of this realm of hate. But it's slow, and it's with changes that you make every day of your life. And I'm not talking about a new job or moving to a new city. I'm talking about mental work to uncover how you're harming yourself and others in your daily life. For so many years, I was fighting to hold on to my old life while simultaneously trying to release my depression. I would try a new medication every month, yet I kept myself trapped in the same routines, hoping that a new therapist or med combination was finally going to be the fix for me. And there was so little I knew about how I was actually harming myself and my body with the choices that I was making. And it's obvious to me now why I was so unhappy, but at the time, I was genuinely at a loss for what more I could do. Because anyone faced with my list of therapies and medications would think that I had tried it all. But despite all of the external sources that I had turned to, I didn't try changing how I felt about myself and how I felt about the world. And I now understand that my habits were little ways to fit the narrative that I had created about myself, about what an awful person that I thought I was. And now, I use my habits as displays of love. Each day that I make the bed, it's because I deserve a clean made bed that makes me feel comfortable. And I eat three meals a day because I decided that I'm a good person and that I deserve to eat. I forgive myself because I deserve unconditional love. And that's not because I'm a perfect person who doesn't make any mistakes. It's because I'm a human being and I'm trying my best and that always deserves love. I love myself, it's possible, and you deserve it too. Thank you.